um, presentation of uh, Dr. Rabber, and he will tell us about the new generation of Euronymous eluting stents eliminate the risk of very late stent thrombosis compared with the early generations of the other stents. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. It's my privilege uh, to give you a summary of the results of the Bern Rotterdam cohort study titled Newer Generation Everolimus Eluting Stents Eliminate the Risk of Very Late Stent Thrombosis Compared with Early Generation Drug Eluting Stents. I do this with pleasure on behalf of my colleagues at both institutions, the Bern University Hospital as well as the Thorax Center in Rotterdam. I have nothing to disclose as it relates to this study and the funding is coming by intramural grants of the clinical trial units uh, in Bern and a grant of the Swiss National, uh, uh, the Swiss National uh, Science Foundation, so there is uh, no industry involvement in this study. Some words about, about the background, the stent thrombosis is a rare but uh, potentially devastating event that uh, potentially leads uh, to uh, cardiac death or uh, myocardial infarction in up to 90% of cases. And early generation drug eluting stents releasing serolimus or paclitaxel are associated with an increased risk of very late stent thrombosis as compared to bare metal stents. So now it is uh, unknown whether the risk of very late stent thrombosis persists with new generation drug eluting stents releasing everolimus in an unselected patient population. And this is just a uh, cumulative incidence curve uh, from the CEDOX late trial that nicely illustrates that the risk of very late stent thrombosis with the use of early generation drug eluting stents actually continued up to a follow-up duration of five years. So it is against this background that the objective of the Bern Rotterdam cohort study was to compare the safety of the unrestricted use of Arolimus eluting stent compared with the two early generation drug eluting stents for coronary revascularization in a large consecutively enrolled patient population throughout four years. The primary endpoint was arc definite stent thrombosis throughout four years. Secondary endpoints included arc definite very late and definite or probable stent thrombosis as well as cardiac death and MI. A total of 12,339 patients constitute the total study population with 4,308 consecutively enrolled paclitaxel eluting stent patients and 3,800 serolimus eluting stent treated patients. They were included between March 2002 and uh, January 2006 and a total of 4,212 consecutively enrolled Everolimus eluting stent patients constitute uh, the newer generation drug eluting stent cohort. They were included from November 2006 up to March 2009 and this actually constitutes the largest available uh, cohort uh, of patients treated with Everolimus eluting stent. Uh, the follow-up was achieved in all groups in more than 96% of the uh, patients and uh, the follow-up duration is outlined uh, here under. This slide shows you the primary endpoint arc definite stent thrombosis through four years. Events uh, were 4.4% for paclitaxel eluting stent 2.9% for serolimus eluting stent and 1.4% for everolimus eluting stent throughout four years. This resulted in a significant relative risk reduction of 59% in favor of everolimus eluting stent as compared to serolimus eluting stent and in a 67% significant relative risk reduction in favor of ES as compared to uh, paclitaxel eluting stent. 
The next slide shows you the cumulative incidence curves for uh, def arc definite stent thrombosis throughout four years, however, with a landmark analysis at one year. So the incidence, the cumulative incidence of very late stent thrombosis amounted to 2.4% in a paclitaxelilutin stent treated population, 1.6% in the serolimusolutin stent treated population, and finally as low as 0.6% in the averolimus eluting stent treated patient. Again, uh, resulting in a, a significant overall risk reduction of 67% in favor of Everolimus as compared to serolimus eluting stent treated patients and uh, resulting in a 76% significant relative risk reduction in favor of Everolimus as compared to paclitaxel eluting stent treated patients. So uh, these are the conclusion of these uh, registry studies. In this observational prospective cohort study, the unrestricted use of Everolimus was associated with a lower risk of overall arc definite and arc definite or probable stent thrombosis up to four years of follow-up. And the benefit in favor of Everolimus eluting stent was most pronounced during the very late time period that is beyond one year with a 67% and 76% reduced risk of definite stent thrombosis compared with the, the two early generation drug eluting stents. The reduced risk of very late stent thrombosis with the unrestricted use of Everolimus eluting stents thereby overcomes a principal limitation of early generation drug eluting stents and uh, therefore constitutes an important advance in this safety. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Questions? Yes? Pierre Dewar from Belgium. Uh, could you explain what is HARC? <coughs> uh, that's the definition. That's the uh, the definition of uh, the stent thrombosis according to the Academic Research Consortium. This paper has been published by Donald Cutlip in 2007 in circulation, okay. and we stick to this uh, definition. Okay. Thank you. Could you talk a little bit about the DAPT regimens the patients were on, compliance levels, things like that? Yeah, sure. It's my pleasure. Um, so, periprocedurally, all patients uh, were treated with aspirin pre or prior, uh, pre or during the uh, procedure. With respect to clopidogrel, all patients were administered 300 up to a, a maximum of 600 uh, milligram clopidogrel. All patients were prescribed uh, prescribed dual antiplatelet therapy or prescribed uh, clopidogrel for the duration of three up to a maximum, that's important, a maximum of 12 months. Certainly, as you have uh, recognized, uh, we are using a cohort which was included from 2002 up to 2006, and certainly the duration of the dual antiplatelet therapy was probably shorter in this cohort. However, this is the reason why we focused on very late stent thrombosis and do not draw any conclusion as it relates to early and late stent thrombosis. So now uh, coming uh, back to your question regarding the compliance. Um, we, in, we were uh, investigating the, du the duration of the dual antiplatelet therapy in all patients. However, they are somewhat difficult to compare because the last follow-up in each stent group is different. So I can give you the data uh, in, in the manner we, we have them available. So at, two, at a mean follow-up duration of uh, 2.5 years, 26% of EES patients were kept on dual antiplatelet therapy, and at a mean duration of four years in the paclitaxel eluting stent group, 13.5% uh, uh, were kept on dual antiplatelet therapy, but 
at four years, not at 2.5 years. And finally, in the C. rollimus elating stent treated group, at a, media, at a mean follow up duration of 3.4 years, 16.5% uh, of patients were kept on dual antiplatelet therapy. But that's, yeah. Other questions? If not, thank you very much, and we thank go you. to the last.